Hello, welcome to the Makers Studio. It's lovely to have you along. We have a fantastic lineup for you today, including our very special guest, Claire Campion. She's a quilter and designer, and she'll be showing us how to use the walking foot on a Janome machine. We are also joined by Valerie Nesbitt. She is one of the UK's finest quilters and patchworkers and internet sensation. And also Jane Brogan, who is a Janome tech expert and also a fantastic educator. So let's go meet Claire. It's lovely to meet you. You too. We'll be seeing some of your final pieces of work later on, but um, I just wanted to ask you what walking foot is then, and this is something you're going to be demonstrating. Yeah, sure. So a walking foot is basically just a foot that you put on your machine, um, and it, it helps push through a thicker amount of fabric. So with quilting, it's fantastic because your feed dogs feed from the bottom and push through, and then it basically does the same at the top and helps walk the fabric through. So it goes through evenly. If you use a normal foot, you kind of feel like you're putting more pressure through and you end up with puckers. The top sometimes doesn't move at the same time as the bottom. So a walking foot just kind of helps out. You make so. it sound really easy. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully through your demonstration, uh, people will be able yes. to use this with ease. It so. makes quilting so much easier. So if you've never used one before and you've struggled with quilting, definitely try a walking foot. So what are you going to make for us today then? So today I'm just going to demonstrate a few walking foot quilting designs, which is the last process of making a quilt. You normally make your patchwork top and then you baste it with your uh, wadding in the middle and the backing and then you quilt it. And you can either send it off to a long arm specialist, which is someone who has a great big machine and can quilt the quilt on these big machines, or you can use your domestic machine. And that's where the walking foot is fantastic because it makes your job a lot easier. Um, but a lot of people just do straightforward lines. I'm just going to show you a few designs you can do with straight line quilting, which just look a bit more interesting. Fantastic. So what thread are you using? So you can use any thread. Good quality thread is always the best way to go um, because you just don't want it breaking. Um, I'm going to be using an Aurifil 50 weight, which is 100% cotton. And for today, I'm going to be using this colour that just contrasts against the top. So it will just give a nice finish to be able to see the design more easily. You can do that with your quilting. You, you don't have to have a plain colour to go on your quilt top. If you want your quilting design to stand out, then choose a colour because when you, um, when you finish it, the whole colour on the spool looks quite dominating, but it, it's not as dominating once it's quilted. Um, other makes are Madeira. Uh, they're also really good to quilt with as well. So this here is your walking foot. Um, very important, this is the AccuFeed one, that this little part here is clicked in, which I'll demonstrate, I'll show you later as well. And what it will do, the feed dogs are in the machine here and then you also kind of have these little teeth here as well and that's going to go up and down and move your fabric on the top. So I'm just going to start, I'm just doing a normal straight stitch, I'm just going to lengthen my stitch a little bit though which is what I tend to do on bigger quilts because then it just goes through quicker. You don't want to go running with a walking foot, you do want to walk. I normally go a bit faster <laughs> but I'll try and keep it slower. Um, Oh, and the other thing I wanted to mention as well is quilting gloves. Um, I probably won't use them today because it's a small sample, but these are fantastic because they help you grip the quilt as it goes under because you're going to be not pushing it through, you're just going to be helping it along and keeping it straight in whichever direction you need to go. And these have like little sticky tips, ever so slightly, like not too much, but yeah. it helps kind of grip onto the fabric and helps you kind of um, move it more easily. So you're so, just going to do a straight line? I'm going to do a straight line, but then I'm just going to go a little bit quicker. Um, I'm going to start off with a crid. So basically straight line, lines this way, straight lines the other way. And I, have, I haven't mentioned, but um, with this one, I have marked out the lines with a hero marker, which is basically equivalent of a quilter's butter knife. So you just use your quilting ruler and wherever you want to draw your line, you just basically make a crease in the fabric and that's what I'm using as a, as a guide. So I'm going to quickly just sew this grid um, and then we'll move on to the next step and eventually we'll make this double boomerang shape here. What's your inspiration for your designs then, Claire? Um, just 
in the moment whatever I see really. I do like um, quite bright modern uh, designs um, with my patchwork, with making my quilts. Um, quite geometric, quite like the logical way of things, so lots of straight lines normally. <laughs> Is that your so, kind of scientist background? I think yeah, logical, so. I methodical. think I think it does. Not that I've overthought it at all, <laughs> but I think it definitely does come through. So, um, but uh, yeah, I'm but trying to be a bit more adventurous. A lot of people are like that, aren't yes. they? They like to follow a pattern. Know yes. what they're going to get at go the end from of A it. to B, and you know that you'll end up with C, definitely. But there's so many things that you can do to kind of make it more interesting, but still keep it kind of straightforward like that you know what you're doing you know what you're going to try and achieve and get at the end of it so and yeah. repetition of patterns as well you've likened it to a magic eye which reminds me of 90s yes. house parties <laughs> do you remember magic eyes no. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> just me then no i do i do <laughs> i think we're perhaps the magic eye age. pictures yes yeah. So if we look yeah, at definitely. your designs long enough, are we going to see a dolphin jumping out? Well, no, not quite that. Not but quite that. <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe a, a few extra shares. shapes, yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, th maybe a few extra shapes and things. So yes, the collider quilt, I think, which is behind me, was the one that kind of, um, was definitely the one that was came together and more shapes kind of evolved uh, as it was pieced together. You've had quite a busy time during the pandemic yes. and as we've heard again and again, you know, people have picked up whether it's, I don't know, a paintbrush or sat at their sewing machine, they've found doing something creative a really good way of passing the time during lockdown and this, yes. this really kicked off for you during, during the lockdown. It period. did, it did definitely and also because I, um, I, I took part in the Janome Big Skillshare where I taught someone how to quilt um, and we actually won the competition, which wow. was amazing. Oh, but yeah, that was very much me going, okay, I might as well try this and be able to like, concentrate on doing something uh, with your hands, I think, is brilliant. And reaching a new audience as well through social media, I mean, you know, it's, it's a really good way of kind of connecting with people, perhaps a, a new generation of, yes. of sewers, quilters. There, there's definitely been a wave of new people, I think, that have picked up um, quilting, especially um, during the pandemic. And it's fantastic to watch because there's so many, I think, much younger generations are coming forward because they've had the time to do it as their lives are so busy they wouldn't have done it so it has been really nice to see it and just see like it's like a fresh wave of people coming into it and it's nice it's really lovely to see and to be part of it. I know your daughter is interested yeah. as well what's to be like that? <laughs> the stuff that she makes is incredible. Yes so I've just taught her how to make her first quilt so and they've been I've got two daughters and they've both been nagging me for so long to do it but then it's finding the time when I've got two of them as well it's finding the space to not get crowded myself with trying to teach them both at the same time. Do you find that she um, can sit quietly and relax and, and do it as a nice kind of wind down thing to do in the evening for her? Uh, yeah I, she definitely needs supervision still though I don't quite trust her to, <laughs> <laughs> to go solo so um, but no she, she definitely I could see her mind and mind while she's doing it it was nice and it was nice for her to see the creative end to it as well, to like have, like, she picked it up at the end and was like, I can't believe I made this. And that's the best feeling, isn't it? It's like, why we all do it. It's just that, it's just a wonderful feeling thinking that you've made something with your own hands. But, so. uh, I mean, you must be a good teacher because I, I think that's, um, <laughs> it's a really difficult thing to try and communicate. Um, if you have a passion for something, that's one thing, but to be able to communicate that to, you know, the next generation um, and kind of grab them and hold their interest. Yeah, so. yeah, it is, it's, it's, it's definitely challenging because I've got no teaching kind of education at all. It's just, um, but I think when you're passionate about something, it's quite, it is nice to try and teach someone else what you're doing and pass it on. It's, you have to really love something to kind of, to do that as well so it, it yeah it's just nice yes. 
So with that, are you just putting the grid in place? Yes, sorry, I was going to stop and say, I was just trying to get ahead while we were chatting yeah. as well. Um, so I've just literally on. done a grid and then I'm literally just going through the centre of the grid to kind of cross it. On the diagonals. On the diagonals, yeah. so just go diagonally across so through your centre points. For, for somebody who's not as accomplished or so or as you, um, you're obviously eyeballing from yes. one point to another, but yes. you could use your hair I would normally, again, I would have normally mark. used the marker yeah. and marked yeah. it. I'm just, I mean, maybe for a yeah. child or something, yes. a nine-year-old. Yes. yes, definitely, yeah. That's so neat, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to do it the best I can just uh, without having to stand up and mark all the time, but yes. So once it's we've much quicker if you don't have to mark it. Though. Oh, it's yeah. I just get on with it. I really love a design that doesn't mean need much marking. <laughs> So there'll be another design that I'm going to quickly go through in a bit as well, which is basically you just draw the one line and then you use your foot as a guide and you don't need to do any more markings and that's... That sounds like me. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds like my sort well, of pattern. Well, I suppose if you want it wider, you've got a quilting guide bar that can, you can use yes, as well. Yes, you can. Get which say so the guide bar would come out and then you'd use your guide bar to... You wouldn't look at your needle, you look at your guide bar to like follow the line. And that's great if you want to do some yeah. hatching on your quilts. Yes, yes I use that quite a bit. It's really handy, that one. Yeah. You only need to mark one line. Yep. And then when do your designs come to you, Claire, then? Is it in the middle of the night or when you're out and about? All the time, actually. Like, when you're out and about, um, you just... You see shapes and patterns in everything, like toilet tiles and all <laughs> sorts. It's the most random places or books and, that you know, not in books, but, like, the front covers of books and things. It's amazing where you just suddenly start seeing patterns and shapes everywhere. Because it's in your mindset when you're like designing things, you do you just have it in your brain at the front of your brain. So I think you're just more aware aware of it. And how do you go about picking your colour themes? For me, I tend to go with the backing fabric that I've chosen. That's where it really helps me because I've got no artistic training. So um, and I know uh, I have a colour wheel and everything, and I know which colours that should go together. But sometimes I find it too. Like it's trying to... It, Too prescriptive. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not like I'm not choosing it, it's, it's choosing me kind of thing. But then I find such inspiration from backing fabrics and I normally, I've got all my like solid colours like in swatches, like little cards, and then I can pick and match and then put them together and that's how a lot of my quilts have come together by matching up the backing fabric. Um, and then you end up using combinations that you would never have thought to use before. So it's, it's quite a good tip if you struggling to pick front coloured fabrics. That's for solids, that's for solid fabrics, for printed, but then you can take those colours and try and match in a printed fabric as well. So, just doing this last one and then that's we'll move on to That's quite interesting because most of us, we piece the quilt front and then we go, what am I going to put on the back now? Yeah. And we look for something there, so it's almost doing it in reverse. Yeah, mm. and I used to do that and then I used to get really frustrated because I couldn't find you the right backing fabric. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So That's a very good tip, that one. Yeah. I <laughs> So I'm going to quick. I am going to quickly mark this because it'll be easier to do. But say so you've you've done your grid and then you've done your cross hatch, and then I'm going to mark the middle. These crossed lines, the first square lines, you just need to mark the middle of them. This is going to be the point that you're going to sew to to make your boomerang shape. But you can see already, it's gone from a very straightforward grid to a more interesting kind of. Um, do you call it cross hatch? Kind of, it's like a very typical quilted pattern, isn't it? And that's a nice thing with the walking foot and the quilting. You can do as much or as little as you want, can't yeah. you? You can get some quite complex designs or you can keep it quite simple. You don't have to. Yes, definitely. Um, I think the first time I got shown any kind of walking foot designs, I was like, how did you do that? And they were like, oh, I just did it on my machine. And, and that's how I kind of found, found out about it. It was from other quilters um, kind of sharing their knowledge and saying, oh, just use this, and if you look at these books and they'll give you some great ideas, and you kind of get hooked. And then it just kind of complements your quilting work as well. I imagine it's, it's one of those things that you can just carry on learning, you know, yes. techniques. It's with anything, though. Talking you kind of, yeah. Like-minded people. You, you start just off very expand. basic, and then you just kind of grow. So I'm going to eyeball it again, but you can, I'll do it with this first row, you can mark it out with a pen. This is a um, fabric erasable pen. You just literally can draw on fabric, and then you use an iron, and it will just, like, the, the ink will disappear. Wow, magic pen. Yeah. <laughs> 
you can again use a hero marker but it's just a little bit easier to um to see so i'll just do the first row to show you what we're going to be doing do you find the quilt tops tell you how they want to be quilted yes yeah, yeah you kind of get a feel mm. i think um yeah it depends what kind of formation the grid if it's a block based pattern to yeah. follow those blocks yeah. or um if it's if there's a lot of a lot of squares and kind of you want you might want to quilt something a bit softer which is why i really like the curve that i'm going to show in a bit as well because that kind of breaks up it's a lot it's a lot softer than like a more straightforward uh, grid formation like this one so i'm just going to so with Start this now. grid, you would be going from the edge of your quilt, you're on a bigger thing, from the edge of your quilt to the so edge I of the quilt. So I should mention that would you, it, would you, it? you start from the middle. So you always, whenever you do your quilting, you start from the middle and work out one way, then you turn your quilt round and you work the other way. So um, so you don't, it's, I think it's also to help, so if the fabric slightly shifts, yes, it, e yeah, it, it evens, evens it out. There. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's going back back on yourself. Yes. Yeah, because we always have the backing and the wadding, don't we? Yeah. yeah. Make it a little bit bigger so then you've yeah. got room for it yeah. to move slightly. Yes, that's why the wadding's yeah. a bit bigger on here as well, just to keep it. You don't want to cut uh, straight. So I've literally just straight, uh, straight stitched from that line to the end of that line. I'm just going to lift up the foot, keep the needle down and twist round. I'm going to sew down to this point here. And this is making a boomerang. So you would do this stitch um, across the pattern, you've got plain fabric there, across the pattern. Yeah, across the whole patchwork. Triangles yeah. and everything. Just yes, imagine this was plan. a patchwork top, you'd right. go across the whole thing. And not to worry, because it might look like you're going to ruin the top, but it will look, once it all comes together, it will look great. Well, that's the thing that most mm. of my students say. I don't want to ruin it. I love my patchwork top and I don't want to ruin yeah. it. So yes, mm. be... Um, and the, the, the walking foot is actually, the machine is doing all the work for you because they know how to sew. So being yeah. able to do what you're, as you, as you say, you're putting the, superimposing this. And I think everyone has to remember that this is not permanent pen, they're stitches. Worst case scenario, get your seam ripper and just rip it out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's thing. absolutely fine. And I have done that. I have actually pulled out a lot of quilting before now when things have gone wrong. Is it because they went wrong or because you didn't no, like the choice of pattern? The one time I had actually done the patchwork top wrong and it was for mm. a pattern test and I realised that one of the shapes was the wrong way so I had to un mm. oh, unquilt yes. <laughs> yes, yes. and stitch the quilting. I think we've all I'm done that. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes, that brings back memories. Yeah. There's no easy fix no. to that. No. It's good to admit that we all make mistakes, isn't it? And Absolutely. Those, you, know, you can get out of it. Yes. You can undo the, the issue. And that's it. No one is ever perfect. And I think that's important to know as well with quilting that, you know, not I can guarantee on, on every quilt, none of my points are all pointy. Like, they're not all pointy. <laughs> it's fine. Just do your best and, you know, it will be... It'll be perfect. So I'm just going to do the last row now. And then you can see already it's starting to produce a really interesting shape mm. with your quilting. Instead of just a very straightforward cross or very straightforward like square, squares across it is actually forming these patterns, these boomerangs here. Um, yes, it's looking really good. It's so... I just, <laughs> I'm amazed how neat it is. It's fabulous. And the lines aren't dead straight. I have to, you know, so don't worry about having to be perfectly straight. It's, it's more forgiving than you realise. And I think when you're using pattern fabrics as well, it tends yes. to blend yes. into it. So yeah. 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 It yeah, yeah, yeah. That is the only thing about using um, solid fabrics. Yes. Mm. It's not very forgiving no. at <laughs> no, all. No. But that's true of a lot mm. of the modern quilts, the, the beautiful model quilts that you, you've made. You've got a lot of uh, negative space, open space that isn't patchwork. Yes. Um, so something like this really fills it in. Yes, lovely. yeah. I think that's what kind of draws me to those kind of designs, is that I love this side of um, making a quilt. And I know a lot of people kind of shy away from this side, don't they? Um, 
Well, I feel I think I think there's been yeah they feel that they can't do it. It's a learned yeah. skill, but actually they've made the whole top, so they've yes. sewn it. I think that's harder than yes. actually this part. I think it's just getting over the mind block of I've got to go over the whole quilt. I could hurt this quilt yes. from doing this, but yeah. as soon as you yes. relax into it, it's absolutely fine. You know, you'll be fine. So I'm just going to do the second boomerang now, which is basically following the same dots again, but from the other corner, and then you make your double boomerang shape. Let's make sure I'm doing it right. Okay, you said that you um, you taught your student the the pattern over Zoom. So yes. how does that work when you have have that kind of distance between you? you can't. I mean, did oh. you have your machine in shot? How, how did it work? How I actually, work? Uh, when it got to the more complex parts, I did actually make some videos and sent them over to Zoe to, um, so she could stop and start them. Because I think the only thing when you Zoom is that it's not recorded. And I think a lot of the time we watch something and then need to re-watch it yes. uh, to kind of pick it up, like with anything. So, um, yeah, so towards the end when it was getting the harder parts that's what I did for her. I sent over little videos because um, when you pick up a craft and you've been doing it for a little while I think we all forget how much we just take for granted like what we know um, you forget that, that the, some, some of the mm. how to turn it on yes. instruction <laughs> yes. you know, is you forget to share yeah. that and Zoe mm. hadn't even changed her needle on her machine so she was like how do I change a oh, needle <laughs> So yeah, yes. Yes, yes, I know. But that's we kind of built up that trust doing it. It was really nice. And she did do a mistake where she pieced a load of pieces together the wrong way and she was so devastated. Oh, no. And I was like, it doesn't matter. I was like, just unstitch them, go to bed, get a night's sleep, and you'll be yeah. fine tomorrow. I said, Don't do any more today because your brain will just you'll just do another mistake and then you'll be even more annoyed with yes. yourself. So. Yeah, we all get stays like yeah. that, don't we? You just walk away and have a cup of tea and then yeah. come back in mm. a few hours. Yeah. I'm almost finished. Just doing the last few. Now it's almost finished. It's really therapeutic watching it's you work. <laughs> I'm just imagining your little girl snuggled up to you just watching you work. Yeah. Getting sleepy before bedtime. <laughs> I wish it was that idyllic. <laughs> <laughs> Off to bed now. Oh dear. <laughs> yeah, that's really taking shape. So it's really quite simple. So you've got to imagine doing this across a much bigger quilt. So it obviously will take a lot more time. Um, but it is worth it to get a nice quilted finish, just to have something a little bit different. Um, and How long I, would one of your quilts take to make? To quilt, to yes. finish this part of it, it would take, oh, this would be best part of a day, I think. So probably a good five hours, five, six hours, so maybe longer, depending depending how big it is and how close, because this is the example here, so this one's a much bigger version of this. This is the same design, um, the double boomerang. So this is two inches, so obviously, if you did that across a big quilt, it would take a lot longer. So you can just space out your blocks if you wanted to, the grid that you start off with, that determines how big your quilting pattern's going to be for this design. So, but it's worth it. It's really worth it. So that's it, that's finished. So all you need to do now is take an eye into this to get rid of your pen marks and it's finished. So that's the first design. Claire, it's been lovely watching you work. We're going to see some more techniques now. So yep. what are we starting with? So we're going to start with this one, which is called an echo curve, which I think gives the most amazing texture. And I've done this a lot on my big quilts, this close together as well, and the stitching. It's lovely. So, <laughs> and it looks very daunting, but it's, it's a really, really nice one to do because you only make one mark and then you use your walking foot as like a guide and you just follow the line over and over. So I've jumped a few steps. Whatever size quilt you have, you want to cut it into quarters, uh, so you've got a centre point. 
and then you just want to do just eyeball it it does not need to be perfect but you just want to make like an s shape through it so kind of round this way to the center and then round the other way and this is going to be your first line so just keep your needle in the middle same stitch length as before i like about 2.8 uh, when i'm quilting it can be shorter it can be longer whatever you're comfortable with and i'm just going to quilt this quickly now because it's not completely straight you do kind of need to manipulate the fabric a little bit and just follow the line but the walking foot will help because it's going to be walking the fabric through for you do you determine the width between each this is i basically line. just use the left is it left yes so the needle when the needle gets pushed to the left side and then it, it's just basically the width of this foot from when the needle is which i'll show you just after this first line do you find as well claire that having that wider throat space on that machine actually helps Amazing. you having more space yeah. to get your quilts through because we've got 210 mil yes. space there which yeah is this is absolutely larger. amazing it's slightly yeah. taller slightly taller yeah. i think it's slightly it's taller but yes definitely machine. it doesn't really you don't really see it with this size of quilt but when you've got a bigger quilt and you're working it through this space here is amazing as well as having an extension table which takes the weight of your quilt off as well if you're only going to do it on this section here the main body then the weight of the quilt kind of pulls it off and that can make the quilting part quite difficult um, so that's your first line through um, and I if the iron was on I could take all these lines off because you don't need anything else now apart from this stitch this stitch line through the middle so I'm just going to shift the needle to the left so the needle's just gone over so you can do this on any domestic machine because they'll all have this function you don't need anything fancy and I'm just going to use just make sure I'm doing it the right way that way so you want the stitch on your left hand side, I'm going to lower my presser foot and where that stitch line is, is where I'm going to keep my foot. It's going to keep that distance all the way around this curve again. So we're all good to go. And don't worry, so this is where I probably should have had my quilting gloves on to help a little bit. Um, but don't worry if it's not perfect, it's really forgiving but it gives the best end result. And the same principle as you were saying before, you work from the inside out and then yes. twizzle around and yes. do the same way the other way. Yeah, exactly. So I'll do this. I won't do it all today, but just so you get an idea, I'll do a few more stitches. So you'll do this side all the way to this tip. You twizzle it 180 and then you do the other side. So you're kind of working from the middle out and then that kind of pushes your fabric out as you go. Yeah, which is the sense of the other thing that yeah. I always share with people is that middle bit is the only time when you've got half of your quilt going through yes. the, the mm. space. So on a regular domestic machine that's really tight. On these you've got you've got all that additional stuff. But it gets easier. So when you're fresh at like the sewing, you're tackling the most yes, difficult you are, bit. Yeah. Um, so yeah. yeah, it's always going to get easier. But having the bigger throats on these machines makes a huge difference. Yeah, it's a, it's a game changer, isn't it? Yes. It's yeah. just you, you, it does give you a lot more confidence because you're not battling with a big wad of um, quilt getting through at the same time. So yes. So imagine I've done all that side. I literally swing it round and do the other side on the way out. And then that's how you get your echo curved um, design. And what's really nice about a curved quilting design is that um, it just softens any pattern, any patchwork pattern. It just complements. So you don't need to worry about having to find those straight lines that go perfectly with your, your patchwork straight lines. It, it will just kind of cover up any little mishaps you might have in your, in your patchwork top. But looks amazing. Like, it looks does. And you've made it look so easy <laughs> as well, I'm thinking. Yeah. I could it do is. that. Honestly, <laughs> you really can. That, you but... can. Like, it is a bit of muscle memory. When you've done... Um, quite a few more, like quite a few quilts. You get muscle memory, your arms get used to it, you get the feel of it, you get a feel of the machine. So practice, these are 12 inch square blocks. Practice with small blocks if you want to before putting your main quilt underneath is probably a, some good advice. And you'll get used to it and it's confidence because you want to keep going. You don't want to keep stop starting because when you stop start, you're going to slightly shift your quilt and that's when you get things going slightly out of place. So just keep going, keep the speed down and you'll be fine. Fantastic. Well, that's so. that's great. That's a great technique that you showed us. Yeah. What, what else can you show us? Today? So I'm going to quickly show this one. This is a really good stitch for this machine. This is called the serpentine stitch. 
um, which is I like to call the wiggle stitch. <laughs> it's a very forgiving stitch, that it's isn't it? It's the most forgiving stitch. You can stitch. lengthen it out, make it yes. a bit wider. And if you want to quilt a quilt quickly, it's great. Brilliant. And so if you'll you're see frightened, quite a few mine yeah. like this. <laughs> if you're frightened, you can't get dead straight lines. That yes, is very, very it's forgiving really good. For and it, you. and yes. when once you've um, actually washed it, it the crinkly texture is fantastic, isn't it? So good. So all I've done is drawn one parallel line to go. Again, just going to be my starting point. And literally follow that line. And as you can see, the needle's just going back and forth. So this is a really simple but effective stitch for quilting. And then you can either mark out um, I normally do, with this one, it's an inch apart and I think I drew lines, but you could just use your... I mean, the guide bar is quite good The guide bar would be well. perfect, yes, yeah. that would be great. So you'd literally have your guide bar coming off and it could sit along mm. that line and go down again. So and I'm again, just... with the walking foot, I think we need to mention to people that the walking foot is designed to go forward, so we'd just use a straight stitch or maybe a zigzag or the serpentine. You wouldn't use it for any of your decorative stitches. You wouldn't get a very good result with it. Yeah, it's designed just to go, to go in one, one direction, yeah. And it's great. I use mine for soft furnishings as well, for doing yes. curtain tape, everything like that. Anything, Anything with lots stick. of layers. Yeah. yeah, it's great. It feeds yeah. it through evenly. Yeah, it's a fantastic bit of kit. It's definitely, I think, it's just worth an investment if your machine doesn't already come with it. If you've got tricky fabrics or stretchy fabrics, anything like that, it's really good just to take it through. Mm -hmm. In, 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 in my book, it's one of the most useful additional yes. feet you yeah. can buy for any yes. of the sewing yes. machines. So there we go, that's the serpentine stitch. You can just see just a slight difference there because it's just a bit closer together. That's, that's how, how easy that is. So yeah, that's that one. And then the last one I was going to show was, I haven't actually drawn a line on this fabric yet, but this is really, really simple. It looks like diamonds, but it's basically parallel lines and then I use my quilting ruler and just draw one line at 60 degrees across this line and then follow that and it just it causes this uh, nice grid which looks lovely on a cushion if you're doing something smaller mm. not as big as a quilt full quilt size so most rulers um, come with with angles on them mm. don't they yes. so yes. they've got 45 and 60 yeah, the quilting yeah. is yes. already there yeah, on, the, on a good quilting yes. ruler you'll have this here so, so yes I'm just going to I'll just quickly... Makes life much easier for us, doesn't, doesn't it, does. it, when you yes. can do that. We, <laughs> li we, li we like tools that have more than one We purpose. do. <laughs> we do. <laughs> yes, because it's how you cut your half square triangles and everything, isn't it? It's mm -hmm. just... Mm -hmm. Right, go back to normal straight stitch. Stitch length up. I'll do this very quickly. Again, if this was a full quilt, I'd be doing this from the middle, but to uh, just save time. So I'm just using, again, like before, keeping the needle in the middle, but I'm just going to use the, uh, the side of the walking foot as a gu guide against that first line. I'll just do one more, just to get an idea, and then... So you'd like to do, you need to do these lines across the whole quilt and then if you get your quilting ruler stand up for this bit. and then where your 60 degree line is on your ruler you just you would just line that 60 degree line on your stitch line and then draw a line across your quilt and that would give your 60 degree angle. You can do any angle you like. This just helps like, produce this kind of diamond effect. And then you just start again. Possibilities are endless. They, they really are, like yeah. It's a really simple tool. You know, you can just let your imagination run wild. You really do just need a walking foot 
and a quilting ruler and a marker of some sort and you can just do the most wonderful quilting designs. You don't need anything fancy. It's not hard. I think that's the biggest thing to get across. It's really, really easy. It's just confidence. And just practice, just practice on a bit of um, scrap paper. Make your own little quilt blocks like this and just give it a practice. Do you find you make notes on them as well as to what your stitch length is at? And I should do. Different bits, you should. We all do it. We think it's we'll remember. Of, yeah. 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 So we forget. Yeah. I think I make, I make a note. If I've got a, 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 a um, cream sample like yeah. this, I often do it on, to, on, on Calico. If I've changed the factory setting, I do scribble on yeah. it with a, with, with a ballpoint. And then yeah. I've got this box full of, of sort of little yeah. bits just because I've changed the factory setting. It does mm. remind me. And, then, and also if I change the thread or the needle, made yes. a slightly thicker a thread yeah. it gives the different effects mm. doesn't it yes definitely yeah. definitely we've oh, got yes. some examples up yeah. on the table to share haven't we so yeah that's the last design thank you claire so thank you for thank showing you. us those thank you so different much. techniques should we go and join our other yes. experts and yes. we'll have a look at some more of your designs yes We've joined our experts, Valerie and Jane, and of course, we have Claire with us as well. What did you think of those demonstrations and those different techniques we that saw? It was fabulous. It really sort of inspired me to go home and do something different. Ha absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And all with the walking foot, which is a skill, and is, sewing yeah. is a skill that we all have and yeah. we love yeah. to do. Yeah. So yeah. this is just yeah. more of it. Yeah. It is, yeah. definitely. Yes. What inspired me most was the fact that you said you actually select your background fabrics, and I absolutely love this one. And then you take the front off it, so that's inspired me to do my next project that way. Yeah, that's a real light bulb it moment was, for all of us. We're like, oh, what? Wow. Yeah. That way round. It's, yeah. it's just simply because I find it too hard to pick fabrics for my patchwork on the front, and I think I've just fallen into falling in love with patterned, with printed fabrics, yeah. which I don't tend to use a lot of in my patchwork, and then taking those colours and putting it into the it's front. Solid, yeah. But as I said, you can also pick very similar printed fabrics that match as well. You don't have to keep keep the solids. So, but yeah. So that's a really, really nice way to do things, I think. Yes. So I should yes. be trying that out. A very different approach. Yeah, let me yes. fold this up. I didn't realise it was so different, so yeah. Well, it's, it's not one yes. that I would have thought of, but now it's great. Claire, you demonstrated lots of techniques and this is all of your work here. Where can we see these techniques in your samples today? So the first one that I did, the double boomerang, is actually on that this big one? cushion there. Yeah, that is actually done with a um, like a, a white thread. Um, so it's, it, it doesn't show up as much as this one here. But you can see it just gives the finished cushion fantastic um, depth and texture. Really pops, mm. yeah. doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and actually, quilters of my generation would have avoided the patchworky bit. Mm. I think we were saying that. Yeah. And, and kind of gone around, because we look at this as a flying goose. But your pattern goes right across it and really gives it, as you say, tips texture and, and actually makes it more interesting. Mm. Yeah, it does. It complements each other, doesn't it? Because standalone, it, I think this is amazing on its own. You could do a whole cluster yes. like this, couldn't yes. you? Yes. Yeah. But then yeah. put on top of a patchwork, it kind of just enhances it. And yeah. Very much so. Yes. yes. No, I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Makes it luxurious, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> the serpentine design. This yes. one here, this, yes. I think this is my favourite actually. <laughs> the wiggle stitch. <laughs> the wiggle stitch. <laughs> Wait, we can see it here, this yes. is fantastic. Yeah, it's so, I know, it's just such a great stitch. It's so quick, isn't it? It's like the fastest, yeah. the fastest finish. It's very versatile yeah. because you can alter the stitch width and length. You can space it further apart. You could actually cross hatch it if you wanted to. Yeah. To give it another sort of design element going on there. And it's just very, very forgiving. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah. this is what I taught my daughter last week mm -hmm. to do as well, because to get a nine-year-old to stitch straight <laughs> is like yeah. a mission isn't it so yeah. yeah to give her a wiggly stitch which she mm. thought was wonderful as well so mm. it's a great one if, to, if kids are, are like trying to learn to sew quilt as well yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. the colors that you use I mean so bold and cheerful yeah. just really exciting really lovely to look at and this I mean is just fabulous behind yes. us as well do you want to talk us so, through that yeah so this one's very similar how I've quilted this one to the echo curved apart from I started with a circle in the middle it's called the spiral uh, quilt design and you do the same you just follow your walking foot out from that inner circle all the way around and finished it but the texture on a big quilt it's my favorite way to finish off a quilt is is fantastic it's absolutely yeah. fabulous absolutely. thank you so much claire thank you. jane and valerie thank you so much for joining us today in the makers studio thanks very much for watching